Today is Thursday, May 12th, 2022, 8.30. And uh, I'll call the combined special meeting of trustees of the Tulsa Airport Improvement Trust and regular meeting members of the Tulsa Airport Authority to order. First item of business is the approval of minutes of April 14th. Move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Chair, you'll be voting today. Okay, I say aye. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Financial and operating reports. All right, so I get to kick things off. Um, Stephanie put a picture up of our triennial yeah. full skill exercise, which was May 3rd, a very cold and windy day. <laughs> um, but we had 75 victims participate that were volunteer victims. 40 observers out there, and then over a dozen agencies that participated. And it's a great opportunity for us to practice our plan, um, to ensure that we're responding within the required timeframes, to let our partner agencies participate. Um, it, it all went really well. We had Tulsa Fire Department out, which was great. Tulsa Police Department, MSA, TSA, the FAA, Oklahoma Air National Guard, many organizations. In the middle of our exercise, we had a real drill. So we had to pause because we had an alert with an F-16 that our teams had to respond to, which gave us about a 15 minute break, 10 to 15 minute break. And when they came back, we resumed and completed the drill. But um, we do this every three years in order to maintain our part 139 requirements. Um, we learn from it, and then in those off years, we do tabletop exercises to, again, kind of walk through everyone's roles and responsibilities. Um, I did want to talk briefly about the tower, um, <clears throat> because it's something that continues to be on our agenda. Um, we did receive an update for the construction and, and development costs from our designer. And those costs have increased significantly from our initial estimate of 42 million. Today, they are projecting the total project cost at 66.3 million. Significant increase. That does include a 15% contingency. It also includes an 8.5% escalation factor. But um, because of market conditions today, because of all of the funding going into construction, mm -hmm. they just see a significant pressure on um, contractors and supplies and materials, labor, all of those things which are playing into our project costs. The site work alone for the locations that were selected is eight and a half million. And so as we are working to get funding, um, I know that there's been some interest, you know, from the county and the city and they've offered their support. We still have an ask pending with the state. And we're also going to submit a funding request to the FAA as part of their airport terminal program to receive funding to support this effort. Um, Andrew and I were in DC yesterday. We participated in the Chamber's DC flying event. And I think our primary takeaway was we've got to spend a little bit of time with Senator Inhofe's team um, who's continued to support us in our request for federal funding. Uh, and, and they are working their angles to try to ensure that we get an allocation from federal resources for this project. And so the design team continues to plug away the design work. We actually have the draft till 2 document, um, which will, once it's finalized, we'll be able to execute a re reimbursable agreement with the FAA so that they can start officially weighing in on the design. Our timeline is starting to become a little crunched, but our goal is to have the design complete by the end of Q1 of 23. So that it, in Q2 of 23, we can go out to bid and start construction like in July of 23. That's our goal. But I just wanted to make sure you all were aware and in a public meeting that you know the public understands that these numbers are going to fluctuate um, just because of market conditions and because of site conditions that we have. But we'll, I pledge to continue to, to brief you all on this, you know, as we have our monthly meetings. So, okay. um, we are gearing up for the PGA and uh, we definitely expect to be busier, if not 
busier than 2019, definitely busier than we've been. Um, when I flew in last night, there were people on the flight who were flying into work the event. And so it was just interesting to see that they're already starting up um, some of the you know, staff workers that are going to be in the tents and things coming in. Um, we have been coordinating with the FAA for airside operations at both Tulsa International and at Tulsa Riverside. And then our um, customer experience team has really been working to make sure that the terminal and landside operations are all set. And so uh, we will have extra staff here, especially the Monday after the event. That's also the Monday after Ironman. And so we just expect to have a lot of golf bags and a lot of bikes um, coming for the week leading up to and, and right after the event. But the terminal looks great. The airfield looks good. And I think we're ready to put the best foot forward for our city for the event. Um, I did want to introduce Daniel Regan, who's our new director of real estate and development. Um, Daniel, as a familiar face to many of you, has been in Tulsa, lifelong Tulsa, um, and we're excited to have him leading our real estate team, and he'll be able to give an update on the things he's bringing to you today. Um, it's also his birthday today, so ah. happy birthday to Daniel. Welcome to a board meeting on your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then immediately following this meeting, we will have the groundbreaking for the new hotel that will be built at the airport. Um, with Promise Hotels as our hotel partner. Uh, the product will be Home to Suites by Hilton. It'll be a 103 suite um, property. And, you know, it's the front door to our city. So it's important to us for many reasons, but more than anything, as our pledge to provide a great customer experience, it'll be nice having a new first class property for our users. So with that, I'll turn it over to Fabio. Good morning. Today I'll be presenting to you the uh, March 2020 over March 2019 fiscal year to date activities. We are officially nine months into our uh, reporting year for the fiscal year 2022. Uh, as you can see, our revenues have exceeded uh, for March over last uh, March, slightly there, just a little over $61,000. So we, we had a really strong March this year. Our fiscal year to date, we're still behind about 3%, a little over a million dollars. Um, our expenses, uh, we had a lot of expenses come through. A lot of it has to do with supply chain issues and everything coming due at once, but we've exceeded our expenses from last year by about, or from 19, by about 2% um, in March, really being that driver, making up the bulk of that uh, excess. Uh, our net operating income, uh, 1.2%. 4 million compared to 1.67 million for the uh, monthly comparative, 9% down from prior fiscal year, uh, but we're still in pretty good shape and we'll get into our budget to actuals in a moment. Food and beverage still trailing 23% fiscal year to date. A lot of our offerings aren't open yet, which uh, limits their availability to, uh, to generate revenues. But our retail is doing exceedingly well, 16% above uh, 2019's numbers and just continues to uh, to, to exceed uh, prior fiscal year. So do you, do you think that is because they offer snack foods and things? Yeah, it's it's a labor it's a labor issue as well. It's, it, it's less uh, people power to operate a store as opposed to a restaurant. Yeah. And, and there is a labor shortage that we're experiencing as well as the rest of the country as well, yeah. just for, just yeah, airports are difficult for the clearance and everything else. So yeah. it doesn't help much. The uh, parking activity ticket pulls are still down about 21%, 12% for the month. However, we did break even in the month of uh, March over March. We had an exceedingly well, uh, uh, exceedingly good month of March with the double spring breaks we were fortunate to have. Uh, still about 10% down, but we're closing that gap slowly. Our ground transportation, again, uh, the monthly comparative is, is a better comparative. We did have a rate structure change. so. 2021 reflects the bulk of that rate structure change where we're only three months into 2019, but we're still down based on activity uh, and revenues generated by that activity by about 27%. And our rental uh, transaction days are down about 30% as well. Um, there's still rental car shortages throughout the country and that's not helping our situation much. <laughs> RVS doing really well. Talking to Austin, they've had a lot of flight activity for the schools. So that increases our, our uh, operations at RVS and the fuel flows, the larger jets, they're burning more fuel. So RVS is doing well as far as activity generation goes. 
Our in-plane passengers still down about 14%. Um, and our cargo is still down about 9% for the fiscal year to date comparative. Looking at our revenues, uh, just kind of a trajectory here. We've got four fiscal years and our fiscal year to date. Uh, we've intersected our 2019, which is our first, our only 12 clean months of activity um, at several points, and we've exceeded it in revenues for the month of March. So we're following a pretty strong trajectory with all of the events, the PGA, the Ironman. We have a... Uh, World Breakdancing Qualifier in June and Tulsa Tough in June as well. So we've, we're projected to finish the year pretty strong, uh, but we're, we're doing well. We're exceeding our budget and we'll get into our budget details in a moment. Looking at our expenses in, in the same comparative graph, um, we're a little higher. Again, supply chain issues, a lot, a lot of items are coming due at once and that causes our expenses to increase. But all in all, we're still below budget. And we're still following that same historical uh, tr uh, trend towards the end of the fiscal year. And our plane passage is a little busy of a slide, but it, it kind of shows you where we were in the last uh, few calendar years. And we are about 343 employments short of 2018's March. So we're getting there. We're following that same seasonal trend over the summer months. And keep in mind, we're only uh, really experiencing leisure travelers at this point. Business travel is not back. So there's a lot of room to grow there. And our budget to actual activities, um, pretty strong. Our, our revenue-based activity, uh, our air carriers, our terminal, our uh, parking, exceeding our budget, we're 17% ahead of what we thought we'd be this fiscal year to date, um, which uh, assists us in alleviating our demand on cash to cover any shortfalls. Um, we are 6% below in our expenses, so we still have a lot of room there, uh, but a million dollars uh, left uh, to carry forward for the next few months of the fiscal year, and we are at a net of $13.5 million, which that will go towards debt service and, and uh, other operating, so there's a lot, a lot better position than we thought we'd be. The forecasted uh, um, uh, comeback, if you will, from that they projected over four years, it really it really happened all at once. I mean, you're seeing a lot of activity. We hit March of last year and we haven't really lost a lot of that momentum. So that all the forecasting of a four year recovery really kind of was a little uh, short, uh, short and as far as projection goes, it happened a lot faster. So uh, have, since the mask mandates uh, were lifted, are you seeing increased uh, flights? I mean, it, it wouldn't show on these reports because it's yeah, I don't know that the mask mandate changed changed demand at all. I mean, no, if anything, I know personally as well as talking to other people, a lot of people who have young kids mm -hmm. are now traveling again because their kids wouldn't wear a mask; they didn't want to risk potentially yeah getting kicked off the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that's a little bit back, but I don't think it's made a huge impact. Mm -hmm. I think people were wanting to travel anyway. They put off vacations yeah. for two years. Yeah. And they're ready to go. Yeah. So. yeah. I read that it's the being vaccinated or not vaccinated and the testing coming in and out. That's what's really caused because they're confused. So they just decide not to go. Right. Okay. Right. So, testing, vaccinations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at our fiscal year today, comparative 19 over 20, it's really our activity based revenues that are, are lacking slightly from um, prior fiscal year 19, um, our parking was down, our passenger carrier was down, and our miscellaneous revenues, which is primarily made up of our CFC fees, uh, was down. Those are the real big drivers. Our steady income, our ground rent, uh, pretty steady to uh, annually with, with uh, adjustments built into those terms. And our expenses uh, still operating uh, fairly close to where we were in fiscal 19, just 2% over on that uh, days of cash position. Um, because we had a lot of expenses hit in March, it dropped our days down just below 300, but we've been averaging about 321 since the beginning of the fiscal year. So there's not a lot of concern there. We do have some FAA grants that were pending reimbursement that'll re reimburse our revenue fund. And we should be back closer to that 325 day uh, cash soon. A uh, few months left in our budget for on our debt service for the fiscal year. No concerns there, and we're still operating with a little cushion in our debt service for our reserve fund, just a little over 12 months. 
And all these numbers will readjust next year as our debt service goes down for the next fiscal year. Any additional questions? Um, you want to go into the yes. draft of the budget? Yep. We're going to uh, ask you to receive the fiscal year draft 2022-2023 fiscal year uh, Tate annual budget for consideration at the June 22 board meeting. So this time last year, we presented to you a budget of modest growth um, because of the unknown. There was, there was a lot of variance out there. We didn't know how fast we were going to recover. Well, as we've seen our fiscal year, we're exceeding our budget. The recovery is happening a lot faster. People are traveling. So this budget is going to show you uh, a year of fiscal growth. Um, we're getting closer to where we were uh, in fiscal year 19 as far as our revenue and our activities. Uh, looking at our indicators, we have the uh, complaint passenger, which is a metric that we measure ourselves against other airports, as well as our annual growth. And the real, the real story here is, I was looking at prior year budgets. Um, in fiscal year 21, we had 777,000 complaint passengers. We exceeded that. In fiscal year 22, we had a million. We've exceeded that. So this year, based on all of the uh, additional services, the carriers, the destination cities, we're looking at about a 1.5 million uh, employee passenger, which brings us back closer to our fiscal year 19 number. And if, if uh, the business travelers resume, we should be able to exceed that as well. Uh, our landed weight following the same trajectory, about a 10% increase based on the increased activity. Uh, because of the increased uh, passengers, our cost per employee passenger, we're projecting a decrease. And we've been fairly close to where we've projected over the last three fiscal years, just a few cents in change. So we're pretty confident that this number is a, a pretty accurate number. Our forecasted revenues, we've retracted and now we've slowly grown. And now we're back to about a $41 million uh, budget for TUL as far as revenue. And a lot of that's our activity-based revenue. Our operating capital, you've seen it uh, decrease, slightly <coughs> increase. And this year, we're, we're bringing to you a larger uh, than normal operating capital budget. However, we do have a lot of deferred items that we're catching up on, and we'll get into the meat of that in a few moments as well. RVS operations increasing steadily uh, with the flight schools and the larger jets. Our fuel flows increasing as well. Our revenue based on contracted uh, revenues and uh, changes in new lease structures are increasing year over year. And uh, we're bringing to you a uh, a slightly lower budget than prior fiscal year for operating capital purchases, but it's a lot of replacement items that our equipment there is just well outdated. Um, this next slide is our budget summary. Uh, the beginning cash balance, that's really our kickstart cash. We need that cash to start the fiscal year, get the, get the uh, fiscal year going. Um, it's larger than prior year, but as you can see at the, the very bottom of the slide, the capital budget is significantly larger. We have our uh, tower and our FIS in there, and we'll break those down in a moment as well. Our PFC debt, line number two, decreasing by about 11.5%. That's through the refinancings we've done. The last two have significantly reduced our, our PFC debt, as well as just the natural pay down of debt. Our um, total uh, revenue sources increasing by about 20%. Uh, healthy projection of about $7.2 million increase. Total resources, uh, $11.3 million higher than the past fiscal year at a $58.3 million resources. Our operating budget does go up about 10.5% slightly. Um, that's primarily due to uh, we, we implemented a uh, performance-based rate increase for our staff. We've added staff members. We've had a hiring freeze. We've slowly thawed that. And now we're at full staffing mode. We also have built in there uh, increases in our utilities. As you remember, there was a significant freeze last year and PSO is making up for, for the, the cost of those freezes. And unfortunately, we have to front that as well. And then we have some uh, contracts that are renewing. We anticipate increases in those contracts, our janitorial being one of our large contracts coming up this fiscal year. And then just the natural increase built into contracts over the course of the year. Our debt service does go down significantly almost the, uh, the value of our operating capital purchases there, 6.3% decline. Uh, and then again, that's due to the natural pay down of debt. 
the large bond refinancing we just closed a few months ago. That helps us free up cash and also build a capacity if there's a need for future debt service. We still continue to monitor our debt to see if there's any advantages that we can take for refinancing any additional debt structure. So that's always being monitored uh, for interest rate savings. Probably not right now. Not right now, <laughs> not right now. But you never know. We, we, no. had, we had a hold on our big bond refinancing for over a year and then we, we ended up doing a lot better than if yeah. uh, things had, stayed, had remained the same. Yeah. Total resources, 58.3 million, 24% increase over uh, where we were last year. <clears throat> um, this slide kind of gives us a real highlight um, sorry about that. It's page uh, page 12 of your uh, budget book. Just gives us a high level look at our revenues, our expenses. Um, overall, we're going to finish the year budgeted at about $12.56 million excess. That'll go towards debt service, as well as funding our, our uh, other operating expenses that may come at, uh, at an unknown. There's always unknowns, unfortunately, when you're running an airport. About 42% increase in the grand total of resources uh, netted. Uh, so we're, we're confident that our, that our revenues are gonna come in strong and we have a pretty good grasp on our expenses as well. Looking at the detailed revenues, page 13 of your book, uh, this really breaks down our, our major revenue sources. Parking still remaining to be our, our largest source at 37%, we're forecasting a $15.4 million parking revenue uh, and rental car revenues, the parking being the real driver there uh, for the fiscal year, as well as our activity-based revenues increasing, our airfield revenues and our air terminal revenues and uh, RVS going up about um, to $1.2 million. The next slide is a highlight of our capital purchases. This is page 15. Um, I'll break down the details to these in on um, page uh, 16 of your bond book. But you see our technology uh, investment, $1.8 million. We have a significant uh, number of items that we need to address this fiscal year. One of them, and the most expensive there being our accounting software, we need to upgrade it. We're currently operating uh, with a software that is no longer supported by Microsoft. So any updates that they push out, we're not, they're not supporting that, the, our version. It's a uh, upgrade to the current software. We do have a project manager management RFP on the street to help uh, get us somebody who can help us navigate what we need and position us for the future for our, our uh, ERP software. Um, so we anticipate dealing with, uh, talking with other airports, uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton and Little Rock being a, a peer airport. They run the same exact financial software we do. A million dollars is, is a very good estimate for that cost. We also have in there um, a PA system upgrade for about $275,000. Uh, crash phone lines for both RBS and TUL, as well as uh, some other uh, in items that have been deferred. Fire system upgrade to being one, rounding out at about $1.8 million total. Our marketing budget of $100,000, we're going to refresh our website. Uh, every five years, we should look at that and refresh it. So Andrew's team is working diligently with a consultant to get that started soon. Uh, the next large item on, on our list there is the customer experience. A lot of these are replacements of existing items that we have. Uh, we're replacing a chiller water pump for about $66,000. We're going to air condition our electric vault for $75,000. And we're buying equipment for TSA bag screening. Uh, at about $22,000 and we're replacing existing equipment that's just me meeting the need. Uh, it's becoming a high maintenance item as well. Um, we're purchasing uh, some, some items for our vehicle maintenance to better facilitate them so they can meet the needs of our airport. Uh, we're purchasing replacement equipment for our operations field. The largest item there is an addition to the fleet, a 28 foot ramp plow at about $120,000. This will allow them to clear the, uh, the terminal area ramp a lot quicker, reducing uh, reducing any downtime that we may have. And we're also replacing some older equipment with newer equipment. Uh, the RVS, we're adding, uh, we have a lot of older equipment there, an O2 vehicle, we're replacing that. We're replacing a 1994 piece of equipment with a mini excavator. Again, smaller, more efficient, faster. They can, they can do a lot more 
and maneuverability. And we're coming to you with an additional shuttle bus. This is a replacing a 15 model, an additional ADA shuttle bus. We have two currently on order. One is an ADA compliant. We feel we should have another one and we'll cycle out older equipment that's becoming high maintenance as well. The next slide really breaks down our capital uh, budget program. And this is page 17 of your booklet. Um, the largest item at the, at the top of the list is our air traffic control design only. We have a uh, budget of about $3 million to, for the design portion of this. We also have our FIS federal inspection station, which we're, we're uh, scheduled to get some uh, federal money for, as well as a contri uh, contribution of our funds for design and early construction of this project. We have an EMAS that's a 90-10 split with the FAA at $11 million. This would go towards our GA runway um, to increase the safety area of that runway. We have terminal road work. Again, these are all 90-10 splits with the FAA. Um, and then we have an installation of an electric vehicle charging station for the parking garage. And we're basically, we're building a small power plant and uh, adding electric charging stations to the garage which we can charge a monetary value as well. Uh, we did receive a grant from NCOG, that's our other sources, a half a million dollars. So that helps us get there faster. Uh, looking at our, our, our uh, vestibules in design for the ticketing, we have the slow revolving doors. Those are becoming maintenance item issues. We have, uh, we have money with the FAA coming to us. So we can replace those with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, vestibule similar to Swab Hall just a lot more user friendly, you can get in and out faster, less maintenance, less gears to go, uh, to go down. We're adding a wayfinding uh, study here in design in construction. This is for terminal signage at the airport as well as inside the airport to help our guests maneuver our airport uh, a little faster, easier, less confusion, less questions. And there's also a component here of a million dollars for new monumental signage at TUL. We'll have a sign at the foot of the uh, Highway 11 off ramp at the main entrance and then an exit sign. So it'll kind of be a nice refresh to TUL visitors and guests. We're gonna modernize four uh, terminal elevators at $800,000. This is potentially a full PFC eligible project. We'll be submitting an application for PFC reimbursements and, we'll, and that'll be a slow reimbursement of funds. So we should get that $800,000 over the activity-based revenues of PFCs coming towards the airport. We have a terminal building uh, furniture replacement. Some of our furniture is is old, and we're we're thinning the herd, if you will, on that furniture. So we need to add some new furniture, give just more comfort to our guests, more usability for our airport, just a more pleasant general experience for our passengers and guests. Uh, we're doing some work on our north side buildings, a roof extension, re-roofing, and exterior work, and then we're also going to construct a military lounge on Concourse B. This is construction and design. We have one on A, but there's a demand for it on B, so we're working on, on adding that facility. RBS, we're doing a connector runway uh, uh, project as well. We're building a connector runway, taxiway one left, one nine right. That's an FAA grant. And we budgeted a contingency of about 10% from the improvements of the safety area down. Uh, total investment that Kate is making in both facilities, $8.8 .8 million. 21.4 from the FAA and a half a million dollars from NCOG for our grant for EV charging. The next slide is the bottom half of page seven. This is our work in process because of supply chain issues and uh, just overall uh, constraints we've had. We have a significant amount of projects coming forward. Usually we have about a few million dollars. We're a little more than that this year. Um, but these projects are all important projects for the airport and are started at some phase in the project life. Perimeter road rehabilitation, our snow equipment, where we've received it, we've paid for it. There's also other ancillary pieces of equipment that we're working with the FAA to get uh, bid and funded for. Um, replacing escalators, this will commence in June. We have four escalators that need to be replaced. Uh, the, the ones up and down in front of Delta and the uh, lower areas in the concourses, as well as the canopy for the uh, arrival roadway. That's been a supply chain issue. That should be here later this summer or early summer as well. And that's a 20 year uh, replacement of a, a 20 year old canopy system. And that's just the white canopy over the arrival road. We'll be doing one of our final roofs, knock on wood for a few years. The mezzanine roof uh, replacement, that should commence in June as well. 
as well as the uh, safety areas and the functional need area. That, that'll be a complete redesign of the lower baggage of lower concourse levels. And those escalators will be utilized there as well. Our flash labeling study, this is for safety for our staff as well as contractors, knowing the hot points and, and what voltage they're, they're dealing with when they're using electrical, uh, tapping into our electrical supplies. Some uh, IT projects that are just residual carry forwards, surveillance storage, surveillance equipment, core switches, and then we have some professional surveying. All in all, between our working process as well as our new capital items, a $14.5 million investment that Tate is making in both facilities, $24.23 million from the FAA, and additional half a million dollars from Pentagon. Our debt service, we've done a significant refinancing for savings. Our debt service is $14.1 million. Um, and next year, it should be slightly below four, uh, $13 million, uh, $14 million, right around that $13 million. But 58% of our, our debt is uh, future revenues, general revenues, with 31% PFC and 11% CFC, which is primarily the garage uh, bonds that we did a few years back. This slide is kind of a nice historical trend. Uh, we peaked in 2018-19 with the addition of the 18A bond and with refinancing just an actual pay down of debt, we have a nice, a nice uh, stair step down towards 2047 where our, all of our bond debt will, will mature. Um, our rates, fees and charges, the final few pages of our book we have uh, three rate increases that we're recommending. We haven't had a parking adjustment in it since April of 17. And every year we visit with our parking operator to see if we're still in market, if there's room. Um, we kind of put that off due to COVID, but with labor costs increasing, we feel a $2 increase in our garage is necessary, a $1 per day increase in our economy lot, and valet will go up to $20 per day plus tax. We also have a new to the rate fees and charges with the airfield vehicle parking tag permit. Uh, this is for users of the airfield that are allowed to park on the airfield. They have to have some kind of branding on their vehicle, either a hang tag or a sticker. There's a lot of lost items. And to put a monetary replacement charge, we feel will uh, cause some additional responsibility to take better care of those tags. So we're incurring a uh, $100 replacement fee charge. And the final slide is our rates, fees, and charges at Tulsa Riverside Airport. These are visited annually. Uh, the implicit price index deflator uh, for the hangar aircraft and commercial, these are for our older leases. All of our newer leases and renewals are moving to a CPI adjustment, so a slight increase there as well. And we've uh, extended an offer, and Alexis will be reaching out for one-on-ones for budget reviews. So expect those to come in the near future. Any additional questions? No. We need a motion to nope. accept. We'll receive it. We'll receive it without motion. Okay. Good job, Claudia. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's a lot right of here. a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of pieces to that yeah. puzzle. <laughs> All right. Uh, accept donation of four illuminated runway closure signs. Yes. This is an interesting one. Yeah. We're, br we're bringing to the board the acceptance, uh, accept a donation of four illuminated yeah. runway closure signs left behind by APAC Central Inc. at the conclusion of the runway 18 right 36 left safety area interim pavement rehabilitation project. These are illuminated X's. We have the certificates uh, for the uh, from the contractor. There's no need. There's no use for them for the contractor, so they've abandoned them in place and handed over the uh, the certificates. We have use for them for future projects, maintenance items. So it's 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 really a benefit to us to accept these for yeah. the airport. Mm -hmm. This will be four plus two older ones that were abandoned in place. We'll have six runway closure X's, and our vehicle maintenance department can maintain those and prolong the life along with our electricians as well, so. Okay, good approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, except no, I see, uh, receive for initial consideration provisions to take human resources policy. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we would like to uh, provide for your initial consideration a change to our parental leave policy. Um, today, our policy allows for uh, two weeks of paid parental leave for the birth of a child or adoption of a child. And 
in line with our uh, family positive workplace uh, initiative here at the airport, what we'd like to propose is adjusting that to eight weeks for a primary caregiver and six weeks for a secondary caregiver. Um, our HR team did a study um, of about 25 different companies, airports and local organizations. Um, and so um, that seems to be in line with what many local Pulsa companies offer. Uh, we believe that this adjustment will allow us to attract top talent and also retain the talent that we have moving forward. That would be eight weeks paid? Um, eight weeks paid that runs concurrently with FMLA and uh, short-term disability if they had it. Okay. And then six weeks for a secondary caregiver. Right. So that could be, um, like if my wife, as an example, if my wife had a child, Right. Um, I would be provided six weeks. Right. Right. And uh, we, the eligibility period for this would be uh, 1,000, you have to work 1,250 hours before you're eligible. So it'd be about seven months worth for a full time employee. Okay. It was interesting at the conference yesterday, the US Chamber provided an update about workforce issues. And for the month of January, where there were 1 million men who re entered the workforce, but only 39,000 women. Wow. And they were talking about things like um, parental leave and child care needs. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I mean, the timing of this was just really interesting. And we're just trying to make sure as we try to attract women to our organization that we're providing benefits that are attractive mm -hmm. to, to women and families. Mm -hmm. so. There are many studies that show that offering more leave um, increases the chances for parents to come back to their career um, after the birth of a child or adoption of a child. So this will also, also assist with that, we believe. Okay. Second. Uh, is that, yeah. this is oh, sorry. Yeah, so we'll replace this on your hand. Uh, so we, we'll receive this without motion. <laughs> But thank you for jumping in there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you were ready. <laughs> um, so you can do it maybe on this one. State human resources policy. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, we would, uh, management would like uh, to recommend approval to a change to our uh, human resources policy manual in regards to our travel policy and our take home vehicle policy, uh, which was presented at the last board meeting. Mm -hmm. We're going to take six and seven together. Okay. Um, have a motion for item six and seven. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, approve uh, revisions to take ground transportation. Yeah. Policy. Approve ground trans. Uh, approve revisions to the take ground transportation policy. We brought the, the policy that brought the peer-to-peer -peer right. people on board, uh, kind of expanding the territory where the ground transportation policy applies yeah. so that we can capture those fees off the roadway. Okay. Um, yep. Have a motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. And I vote aye as well. Thank you. Uh, Contracts. Item nine is select, or excuse me, accept selection through the word contract for construction observation services to Benham Design LLC in the amount not to exceed $19,300 for the runway 826 safety area improvement. Uh, this is just construction observation of a project that you approved, construction you approved last month, and management reference approval. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 10 is accept selection of approval order contract for construction observation services to GH2 Architect LLC in the amount not to exceed $29,634.45. And uh, this project is the mezzanine roof replacement project. Again, construction observation. <coughs> Last month, Mary asked what the square footage of the terminal building roof is. We have 348,000 square feet. That is terminal, concourses, bag claims, 
And this is uh, this roof replacement is about 19,500 square feet. So it's about five and a half percent of the total roof area. Thank you, Frank. You bet. Management recommends approval. That is a, a number that I, I will always it. remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, a, that's a lot of roof. Have a motion. Second. Second. Mary and Jeff seconding. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 11 is accept selection and approval award of contract for construction observation services. Again, the GH2 Architect LLC and they not, not to exceed $36,769.64. And this is for construction observation of the functional needs area here at the terminal. Uh, management recommends approval. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Item 12 is accept selection of approval award of contract with professional consulting services to Grisham Smith, GP, in the amount not to exceed $550,000 for the Tate Sign Wayfinding Improvement Plan project. This project will have three different phases to it. Phase one will be the signs at the exit of Gilcrease Expressway, uh, the entrance there at the intersection, and the uh, Welcome to Tulsa sign on the exit road. That will be phase one to prepare plans and specifications for the bidding of that project. The second phase of this project will basically be assessing what the existing signs are, where they're at, um, what they're trying to say, and so forth. And the third phase will be a basically a master plan of the sign configuration here at TUL. That'll be the, the uh, text, the font, the color, the size throughout the terminal building, throughout the parking garage, and also on the roadway. So we uh, management recommend approval of item 12. Okay. Approval. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Session agreement. That's you, Dan. Supposed to take all of these together, unless. Let's take 13, 14, and 15 separately, and then yeah. we'll take then we'll uh, RBS. Yeah. Please. Good. Yeah. Uh, item 13 approved concessions agreement with Tricopian LLC DBA Fuel Rod for portable charging device vending machines effective August 1, 2022. Item 14, approved non-signatory cargo air carrier license agreement with Martin Air Aviation LLC for one year with two one-year options to extend the term. Item 15, approved non-signatory cargo air carrier license agreement with Baco Kula LLC, DBA Aloha Air Cargo for one year. Okay. Move approval 13, 14, 15. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. No vote yes. Thank you. Uh, RBS agenda. Item number 16, approve sublease agreement with Rick Bradigan for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term and at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-125. Approve sublease agreement with Vincent Bryant for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-132. Approved sublease agreement with Mojave Construction for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-127. Approved sublease agreement with Met Games, Inc. for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-128. Approved sublease agreement with Brent C. Ramsey, trustee of the Brent C. Ramsey Irrevocable Trust, for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-133. Approved sublease agreement with T6 Hangar LLC for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-134. Approved sublease agreement with William M. Meeks and Rebecca Ann Meeks for 15 years with two five-year options to extend the term at the standard rate, effective July 1, 2022. This is hangar B-22. 
finally approve sublease agreement with Pope 23 LLC 15 years with two five year options to extend the term at the standard rate effective July 1, 2022. This is Hanger 131. <clears throat> Take a breath. <laughs> I think you've done this before. Yeah. <laughs> like a pro. That was, I mean, that was very good. So you got a radio voice. All right. <laughs> it, I mean, it's going to be just naming all the numbers is going to take a long time. Move approval 16 through 23. <laughs> oh, you shorten it up. Very good. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? For aye. second? Yeah, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Not on the agenda, but um, I have a motion to adjourn. Or we, are we, we have some new business. Oh, we have yeah, new business. We have, we uh -oh. have new business. One, one, uh, one item. item. Yeah, one item. One sublease agreement. That, oh, okay. Uh, Riverside, uh, as well, but uh, being presented as new business. And this is approved assignment of sublease and acknowledgement consent to assignment from 6646K Inc. To Mandarin Moonfish LLC. This is for hangar B54. At Riverside. At Riverside, yes, sir. So moved. Second. All in favor. Um, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Move the Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Are you all going to join us? <clears throat> 116. 116. Oh, okay.